Hello and welcome again to another episode of the Long Gone Loser Rock Show. Today we are going to talk about Nemo Feeler, this Blu-ray, Rising Nemo, the fourth anniversary, filmed at the Tokyo Garden Center. Let's get into it. So this was the first Blu-ray I bought of Nemo Feeler. Now, they're a band that I discovered a while ago, but, you know, when I went to Japan, I was looking for stuff on vinyl. I wasn't looking for CDs. So I saw all their stuff around everywhere, and I was just like, ah, oh, it's just CDs. I don't really need those CDs. I'd rather have them on record. And then I realized that half of their stuff doesn't even exist on records, but they do have one, and... Uh, I have that waiting for me in America. It was sent to a friend's house. So I'm looking forward to picking that up when I get there. But they've just released a brand new album. It's called Evolve and it sounds incredible. The songs that I've listened to already, amazing. These girls are on fire. This is an incredible performance. So you would have seen me do the unboxing on this when I got it. And I just got around to watching it finally. I just, I'm robbed of time. The performance starts off, they come out on stage. They're playing this huge venue. I mean, I didn't realize that the Tokyo Garden Center is as big as it is, but it's absolutely huge. And I don't know if there were any other support bands or anything like that, but just the fact that they were playing this massive venue and, you know, it was like, man, like, I didn't realize they were that big, you know, in their home country because... It seems like when I'm over there and I talk to a lot of Japanese people about the bands that I'm into, some of them don't even know what Japanese music, you know, is out there, you know, and they live there, you know, and I'm talking to them about Nemo Feeler and, you know, Love Bites and whatever, and they don't even know these bands and they live there. And it's, I guess it's kind of like a, a curse like we have here in Australia where Australians, and I'm not talking about all Australians, but many of them don't listen to Australian music, but like they don't go to shows. They're not out there seeing the local bands. You know, they're just not. If if that was the case, none of these festivals would be cancelling uh, due to low ticket sales. I guess that the same problem is happening in Japan where a lot of the Japanese people just don't listen to local music. And it's a shame if that is the case because they have got the best talent in the world when it comes to metal right now. Like, seriously, like the bands that are coming out of Japan are just on fire they are phenomenal and you know as you would have seen in the love bites blu-ray that i just did you know a few weeks ago now we have nemo feelers blu-ray i'll open it up quickly now for those who haven't watched the unboxing but uh, there is the track listing there like seriously if you don't know these songs wow you need to get on board because these songs are amazing here is where the blu-ray is encased this is uh, some artwork there and you open it up and there is the girls and the blu-ray there now it also came with this booklet which is pretty cool so uh, here is the booklet and you know there is some stuff there you go with mayu saki hazuki haraguchi-san Maruta Tamu. And yeah, there you go. It also came with this signed photo of Saki, which is awesome because, you know, she's like a queen. Saki looks like a supermodel. Like, no shit. Like, watching her on that stage playing guitar, she looks like a supermodel playing guitar. Mayu is an incredible vocalist. In this band, she's able to switch between her screaming growls, which kind of reminds me a little bit of Sebastian Bach when she does those screams and you know like she changes between the screams and the really melodic big chorus vocals that she does and she holds it up like this show is two hours long two hours long and she's doing this her voice has got to be hurting and like surely after two hours going from that scream to the high pitch but you know she's a pro and you know obviously knows how to look after her voice sounds phenomenal really does You've got the twin guitar attack of Hazuki and Saki, which is just wild. Like, you can definitely see that there is a difference in the way the two play guitars. Saki is very much into, you know, playing you know, fast, shredding, like fucking 
you know, running on that one string or whatever. Then you've got Hazuki, who is kind of like doing like the Steve Vai thing. I mean, she plays an Ibanez, you know, great homage to Steve Vai, even though I'm sure that's not why she plays it. But, you know, you, she has like the, the feelings and stuff like that when she plays. You can see there is definitely a difference between the styles of the two girls. Then you got Haraguchi-san on bass there, and she looks like she's having a ball. Like, the, through the whole thing, she's just having the time of her life. Oh, my God. Let's talk about that drummer. Oh, my God. Like, she is incredible. Her feels are so good. Like, just the way she plays. Like, there's songs in on this Blu-ray where, you know, there is a little bit of a drum solo type thing going on. And watching her feels and stuff like that, I'm just blown away by how good she is. She really knows how to take advantage of the whole kit. And she does backing vocals on top of that. These girls are just incredible. Like, they really are incredible. Like, this set list as well. Like, you know, Revive is a great opener. Rise, which is possibly my favorite song by them. Change the World is so good. Uh, Back Into the Wild so good. Waiting For You is such a killer tune. And... The performance of it on here is so good. It's so high energy. It's probably the most punk rock that the band gets. Like it's very, it's it's got a huge punk rock feel to it, the way that they play it and the way it's sang and whatever. It's such a good song though. And uh, I don't know whether that was supposed to be like them aiming for a radio hit or something like that, because it probably is the one that should have been on the radio. Uh, it's such a good song. If you've never heard it before, check it out. And you got, you know, Dissension Sarai, Caesar Fate and Oiran, and then Life. Now, before they play the last song, Life, they do this big speech, which uh, I'm assuming is them being very grateful for the four years because they're playing this massive fucking venue and they've had huge support. They're in all these magazines. They're, you know, they're releasing Blu-rays left, right, and center. They've only got like four albums or something like that, and yet they're, you know, on this stage in front of this huge audience. And, yeah, I I get the feeling that they're being grateful. And they're all crying. Like, this is a very emotional moment for them. It's definitely authentic and genuine. And, you know, they're doing it because they love it. You know, this isn't just a job to them. This is something you can tell that they absolutely love. And, you know, to see the emotion on stage, you know, especially during this moment before they play the song Life, which is a very beautiful song. Like, Life is a fantastic tune. And it's incredible seeing the way that, you know, they perform that on here. I mean, it's always been a great song, even on the the albums, but I feel that this performance of it is superior to the album version. Nemo Fila really came to my attention because they were doing all these covers online and they were doing amazing performances of it. And so, you know, they were doing like The Trooper uh, or Aces High. They were doing like so many songs, Metallica. They've been doing all these covers online while they're at rehearsals or something like that, which are amazing to hear. And I'm sure that's helped propel them into world stardom, you know, because they're so good at it. You know, there's a really funny one of them dressed up as Kiss doing Detroit Rock City. Uh, It's well worth checking out. But man, like, they're such a good band. And I'm glad that, you know, they are able to tour the world. They haven't come to Australia yet. But fingers crossed that it happens soon. Because uh, I hate when... A band is so good and yet their audience is still so limited that they, you know, it's not profitable for a promoter to bring them to a country like Australia because, you know, it's hard to tour here. I get it, you know, and especially with our financial crisis that people here live in where the wages aren't going up but the cost of living is, you know, it's getting harder for people to be able to afford to go to shows. Hence the fact why all these festivals are just dying. Everything is going up except our wages. <laughs> and so I feel that, you know, unfortunately, you know, Australia's music scene, like the festival scene is dying because of it. Because, you know, people can't afford to pay these ticket prices. But anyway, that is why I buy these Blu-rays of all these Japanese bands, because I don't know if I'm ever going to get to see them live. It seems like every time I go to Japan, which is usually October, these bands are not playing. <laughs> you know, like, Love Bites are playing in September this year, and I'm going to be there in October. So it's like, fuck, you know, I can't, I can't win. But, you know, thankfully, these bands are putting out all these Blu-rays so that I can get to see them still, because, you know, I love seeing this music. This Blu-ray in particular, the only quibble that I have with this Blu-ray, and there's only one, 
And, you know, it's two hours long, which is fantastic. There is no extras, no bonus features, no nothing, just the concert. And I feel like that is, you know, like, oh, really? Like, couldn't any backstage shenanigans, you couldn't show us any uh, rehearsals for the tour, you couldn't show us anything like, I don't know, just a day in the life of each member as they're getting prepared for the show. You know, like just something else. And that's the only quibble I have with this. You know, it's just it's just the show. I mean, it's a fantastic show though. Like, don't get me wrong. Like this, you know, I'm happy with it. Like, whatever. It's just like, you know, two hours, you, it's a Blu-ray. You could have fit on a lot more stuff. Even music videos. Why not just give us music videos to the songs or something? Like, I don't know. So that is a look at Nemo Feeler's fourth anniversary Blu-ray at the Tokyo Garden Center in Japan. And yeah, if you love your metal and you love your screamo to melodic heavy metal, this band is for you. And they have elements of punk and hardcore and stuff like that, although I'm sure that's not what they class themselves as. But there is definitely elements of it in their music. Well worth checking out. Awesome band. Well, there we go. Thank you so much for watching another episode of The Long Gone Loser Rock Show. Take care of yourselves. Look after each other. Go buy some records. Go check out Nima Fila, like we're going to right now. Bye-bye. This is my way